All right, welcome back. So I've taken a little time off to take care of some much needed home repairs. A lot of my projects always go to the point of about 90% and then I kind of fall off really quickly. So a lot of those 10%ers are really adding up, so I needed to take care of them. With that put aside, I do have a small little fun project to do today and uh, won't you join me? First, I need to clean up. Oof. All right, so. Put that cleared away, put the spackle, put the putty knives, put everything away. Now it's time for the real fun. So many of you may know I do have a golden retriever and I belong to a few farms. But I've been made to understand that what I have been doing all my life, I've been doing completely wrong. What am I talking about? How to feed your dog properly. The notion of putting your dog bowl on the floor by many considered the wrong technique. I've been doing it wrong all my life. I'm not sure if I subscribe to that methodology, but I'm willing to try it and see if it works. So, what am I talking about? I will try to accommodate that and see if it'll actually work to try to elevate the balls off the floor um, in some sort of wooden stand, I guess, if you will. Now, I suppose I can go buy one, but I figured let's do this and we can design one and it's not really that complicated and we can customize it as well. So there is a formula, there is a little measuring formula um, to kind of gauge where these need to be off the floor relative to your specific dog's height. And if I understand, if you have your dog in the sitting position, you measure from the floor to the top of their head and then subtract six or seven inches. I'm not sure how scientific that is. I did do that. Yeah, it seemed a little high. I'm not sure if I want the dog bowls to be really high off the floor. So I think I settled for a good distance, which is approximately like, like 13 and a half inches off the floor. I'm going with that. You can actually design it around what you are using for holes. Um, these are brand new ones that I bought for my dog. I figured they were cheap enough and I would start with brand new ones. And these are about the size that he uses. So I bought two of them. So for a simple technique, you can actually use your bowls as a template. Um, the most important thing is you want to make sure that it fits within your design. You want to make sure that you mock your centers. I've already gone ahead and mocked my center on the wood. And I'm going to roughly mock the center on the bowl. This bowl is eight inches in diameter, by the way, which is pretty common. So I'm gonna mock that and kind of eyeball it for now. And what I wanna do is take a square, a carpenter square, and bring it up. That way I have some sort of reference of where this bowl needs to be. And reference to the uh, the piece of wood and I will take my other bowl and put it right next to it. Now there, there are other methods of doing this but this is the easiest way to get everything to make sure your bowls are are in alignment. What you can do is just draw simply draw around the outside of the top of the bowl. So you have a good representation of where your hole placement needs to be. The key is, on these particular bowls, there's a lip. So there's, a, there's an offset a little bit. So what you want to do is make sure you accommodate for that lip. And you want the bowls to sit in the hole and rest on this lip. So you need to go in, I, it's about 3 sixteenths of an inch that I need to go in that it needs to be an offset. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can measure the diameter roughly and then subtract 3 sixteenths of an inch on each side and you can use a pair of dividers and get your center and then you can just scribe along to get your offset on the inside of that line. That way the bowl sits in the hole and is supported by the lip. Now as you can see this opening will be too close to the, the edge. This is just for informational purposes but you can do a lot with this. You can create your own designs. You can, I know some people like the dog bone design. I like that. I think I'm gonna use that design. Now this is the perfect opportunity to come up with your own creation. And I think I'm gonna do the dog bone design, which is something similar to this. And then you can use your 
your jigsaw or a coping saw to cut this shape out. And then you can also use your jigsaw to cut the circle out as well. But I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so, wow. No, I'm not lazy. I'm just, uh, my workplace recognizes uh, November as Movember. Grow out your beard to recognize men's, men's health awareness month. That's what it is. So, I finished shaping the two sides, the two end pieces that will hold everything together. And um, I did some rough sanding. It's roughly, roughly eight and a half inches tall by eight inches on the widest side. And a little dog bone. Good decoration. So I also have these two pieces of pine that will effectively connect everything together, the stretchers. And uh, what I first have to do, they're too thick, so what I first have to do is put it through the wood eater over there, the planter, and get it down to a rough thickness of about a half inch. You know, sometimes people say the camera adds 10 pounds. I think it adds some grayness too. Okay, so I got the basic framework dry assembled and uh, I liked the overall design. I made some layout lines and some measurements to have the stretchers not at the very top because it would just get in the way of the bowls. Um, so I, I decided to bring the stretchers down a bit and I believe glue probably won't be strong enough to hold this together over time. So I think I was going to use pocket screws. But because it is an open frame type design, you'll be able to see those pocket screws from below and from at an angle, you'll be able to see them. So I decided to dust off an old friend, the dowel and jig. <sighs> Haven't used this one in a while, so let's get to work. I seem to have misplaced my locating pins. And what those are, are little shop little pins that you put in the holes and then you can make your markings to, a, to the corresponding piece with fairly decent accuracy. But I can't find them. So, old fashioned way, I've made some center lines and I made some indicating lines here that represents where the middle of where the stretches will go. And I'll just make my adjustments accordingly. So I know right here is where the leading edge of this board will be. And I'll just line it up right there and just make my corresponding holes right there. Hopefully, they'll line up. This is very tough doing it like this, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's very tough. So I have a quarter inch drill bit to match the quarter inch 
holes for the dowels and I measured and I also have a piece of tape to indicate my maximum depth that I want to go through. The last thing I want to do is go through the other side. I don't want to do that. So that's why I have tape on it. That's the point of the tape. I don't go through the other side. The moment of truth. I have to admit, I did screw up. Like I said, I didn't have those locating pins, couldn't find them anywhere, so very small tolerances. I had to, what I did was I labeled each corresponding side to where they go into. That way, when I do the glue up later on, I know exactly which piece goes to where because if I flip flop them, then the holes are off just slightly where it would cause it to either rack or not be square. So. It worked out well. So now I think I'm gonna tear this apart, take my router, ease all the edges, put a round over on, including the top. And um, I have something else in mind too, to customize this even more. Stay tuned. Okay, so it's actually been completed for about a week now and we've been using it. Well, 
blues venue, isn't it? To kind of highlight some do's and don'ts that I would probably, if I were to build this again, I would definitely do it differently. One of the major design flaws that I did when I sketched it up was I made the top a little bit too uh, short. It should have been about an inch and a half longer or so. Not that it would have affected the overall look of it or aesthetics. It just would have made construction a little bit more easier for me. But with that being said, it's a very basic design, very simple to construct and build. Blue's been using this now for about a week and there is one thing that I did notice which was unexpected was the mess. There's not much of a mess anymore. So typically when you have the bowls on the floor, like we used to have it on a mat, and blue would just get drool and get water all over the place and some cable would fall out. With this, I've noticed that you don't get that. You don't get the water on the floor. You don't get the cable on the floor. So maybe in that respect, um, it is definitely worth looking into if you find that's happening with your pet, but I wasn't expecting that. As far as from a health perspective, I'm not, medically inclined to even make those types of statements i don't know um but i know there's a lot of debate on elevating your food for your pet for better digestive purposes i don't know what i also did too was to personalize it a little bit i used a cricket machine to create these personalized decals for blue and i have one on the, on the back as well there's not much more to be said about it that it actually does work. It keeps the area cleaner and it just looks nicer too because how often do you have bowls on the floor and after your dog's done eating, they're all over the place. This way it keeps the bowls nice and compact in a nice location where they belong. And when you're done, you can either put it away, out of the way, or you can just leave. It looks nice. So uh, thanks for following along and uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, follow me on Instagram, JoePalumbo221. And I will see you next time.